All right, question of the week, Inblex Review number 24. Our question is, which group of muscles would resist extension at the tibiofemoral joint? It's going to be A, the quadriceps group, B, the hamstrings group, C, the gluteal group, or D, the adductor group? One more time. Which group of muscles would resist extension at the tibiofemoral joint? Is it going to be the quadriceps group, hamstrings group, gluteal group, or adductor group? So I'll give you a few moments to work on this one, and then we'll go ahead and head over to the explanation. All right, so in the community tab, I asked you which group of muscles would resist extension at the tibiofemoral joint, and we had a great turnout here. We had 37 votes. 54% of you said it was the quadriceps group, 32% of you said it was the hamstrings group, 5% of you said it was the gluteal group, and then 8% of you said it was the adductor group. And then thank you to the six people who liked this post. So a majority of you said it was the quadriceps group. So let's go ahead and take a look at this question and see what the answer is. First, we need to make sure that we have an understanding of what the tibiofemoral tibiofemoral joint is. So let's go ahead and take a look at the skeletal system. Here we have the tibia and then we have the femur. And so when these two bones articulate, they create the tibiofemoral joint, also known as the knee. So this question says, which group of muscles would resist extension at the tibiofemoral joint? So we know that the quadriceps group is going to extend the knee. We know that the hamstrings group is going to flex at the knee, but the gluteal group's action is at the hip, and the adductor group's actions are also at the hip. So we can go ahead and get rid of these two answers, leaving us with either the quadriceps group or the hamstring group, giving us a 50-50% chance of getting this answer correct. Now, in order to understand the answer to this question, we have to make sure we understand the roles that muscles play. And it's important that we understand that muscles never work alone. There is always multiple muscles at work when then act action takes place, keeping everything in balance. And so we need to make sure we have an understanding of what is an agonist, what is an antagonist, what is a synergist, and then what is a fixator. And so the muscle that is responsible for the action is also known as our agonist. This is going to be our prime mover. And then the muscle that is responsible for the opposite or the opposing mover is known as our antagonist. So let's look at an example here. We have flexion at the elbow. So when flexion at the elbow takes place, our agonist or our prime mover is going to be our biceps brachii. Now the opposing mover or the antagonist is going to be our triceps brachii. So make sure you understand that. This muscle is responsible for the action and this muscle is responsible for the opposing movement. Agonist, antagonist. Now we have synergists. Synergists are known as our helpers. These are going to assist or help the prime mover. So in this example, our prime mover, again, flexion at the elbow, our prime mover is the biceps brachii. And our synergist or our helper is going to be our brachialis. So the brachialis is going to be underneath our biceps brachii. It is deeper to the biceps brachii. And the brachialis is going to help or assist our biceps brachii in flexion at the elbow. So it is known as a synergist, a helper. And then lastly, we have fixators. Fixators are also known as stabilizers. And a good example of this is going to be our rotator cuff muscles. What these muscles do is they're going to fixate or stabilize. Another word I like to think of is anchor. And so you have them inserting on the head of the humerus, which is going to hold the head of the humerus in place with the glenoid cavity of the scapula. So it's going to hold this joint together and when we flex at the elbow, this joint isn't going to pop out of socket because we have these muscles that almost create like a cap. They're going to hold this joint together. And so these are known as fixators. And this is the easiest way for me to show you what a fixator or a stabilizer is. This is responsible for holding this joint together or anchoring this joint in place. So now we need to figure out, well, which muscles would resist extension at the tibiofemoral joint? Remember, tibiofemoral joint is going to be our knee. So let's look at extension. So here is extension at the knee. We know that the muscles that are responsible for our extension are going to be our quadricep group muscles that are in the anterior compartment of our 
thigh. And a key word here in this question is which group of muscles would resist extension at the tibial femoral joint. So let's look at this picture again. We have the quadricep groups, muscles in the anterior compartment of the thigh, and they are our prime movers in extension at the knee. Now the muscles that are going to resist extension at the knee are going to be our posterior compartment muscles, which are going to be our hamstrings. So the correct answer here is the hamstrings group. They would resist extension at the tibial femoral joint. So make sure you understand that when the prime mover, the agonist is in movement, in this case, extension at the tibial femoral joint, there is always an opposing muscle that is resisting this action. And that is going to be the antagonist, in this case, the hamstrings group muscle. So 32% of you got this answer correct. Now, if you did not get this answer correct, I would encourage you to check out this video that's already on the YouTube channel that goes over agonists, antagonists, synergists, and fixators. And make sure you have an understanding of what that is before you go into the Mblex. All right, y'all have a wonderful week ahead, and I will see y'all in the next question of the week. Y'all take care.